Hey guys, welcome back to Brown's Math Club. Today we'll be learning how to change rational numbers into decimals. So remember that rational numbers are just numbers that can be changed into simple fractions. So today we'll be learning how to change these rational numbers into decimals. So as I said, they can be changed into simple fractions. So let's say that we have a fraction. So a fraction is a rational number, of course. So let's say that we have the fraction 3 and 1 fifths. And we have to change this fraction into a decimal. Well, first of all, we see that this is a mixed number. So that means it has a whole number and then it has a fraction. We need to change this mixed number into an improper fraction. An improper fraction just has a numerator that is bigger than the denominator. So numerator is the top number and denominator is the bottom number. So in order to change this mixed number into a, an improper fraction, we have to multiply the whole number, which is 3, by the denominator, which is 5. So 3 times 5 gives us 15. Next, we have to add that to the numerator. So 15 plus 1 is 16. So we're going to get 16 as our new numerator for the, for the improper fraction, and the denominator stays at it as it is, which is the number 5. So we have 16 over 5, which is an improper fraction. Okay, so now we have an improper fraction. Let's go ahead and change this into a decimal. We can do that by dividing 16 by 5. So if we go ahead and do the division, we have 16 here in, inside as our dividend, and then 5 is going to be our divisor. So we know that 5 goes into 16 3 times, which is 5 times 3 is 15, and we have 1 left as our remainder. We can add a decimal in our quotient and then add a 0 to the 1 to get a 10. 5 times 2 gives us 10. So we get... 3.2 as our decimal. We know that this is a rational number because this is a terminating decimal, and a terminating decimal does not repeat. So 3.2, so this also proves that 3 and 1 fifths is a rational number. So this is how we change a rational number into a decimal. Let's go ahead and do another example. So this time, let's say that we have a negative fraction. So this time, let's say we have negative 5 eighths. This is already a fraction, it's not a mixed number, right? So we don't have to change this into an improper fraction. All we have to do is divide. So we're going to have to divide a 5 by, a t by an 8. Now we could forget about the negative sign for now, so we can just leave the negative sign for now and just simply divide 5 by 8. So if we do division, we have 5 divided by 8. We know that 8 can, we cannot multiply anything by 8 to get 5, so we're going to have to add a decimal point in our quotient and then add a zero. So now we have 50. 8 times 6 gives us 48. And we're left with 2. If we add another zero, we have 20. So 8 times 2 gives us 16. And we are left with 4. Again, add a zero, and 8 times 5 gives us 40. So our answer is 0.625. And once again, 0.625 is a terminating decimal. That means it does not repeat. So this also proves that negative 5 eighths is a rational number. Now keep in mind that we left out the negative sign in the beginning when we were dividing. We need to add that negative sign back into our answer. So if it was negative 5 divided by 8, our answer is going to be a negative 0.625. So it would be negative 0.625. So this is our final answer. Let's go ahead and do our last example. So this time we have a negative mixed number. So this time we have negative 5 and 2 fifths. So we see that we have a mixed number, so we have to change it into an improper fraction. Now for this, we can leave the negative sign alone and change it into an improper fraction and then add the negative sign back. So what I mean by that is if we just take 5 and 2 fifths and change that into an improper fraction, we will first multiply 5 by 5 to get 25 and then add that to the numerator, which is 2. So 25 plus 2 is 27. So the new numerator for the improper fraction is going to be 27 and then we keep the same denominator of 5. And remember, add back the ne negative sign. So the improper fraction is going to be negative 27 over 5. Next thing that we have to do is we have to change this into a decimal. 
Now, once again, we can leave the negative sign alone and then divide 27 by 5 and then add it back to our answer. So 27 divided by 5, we know that 5 goes into 27 5 times, and we're left with 2. We add a decimal point in our quotient to be able to add a 0, and then we have 5 times 4, which gives us 20. So our final answer is 5.4, but remember to add back the negative sign. So the final answer is going to be negative 5.4. And once again, this is again a terminating decimal. That means it does not repeat. And remember, terminating decimals are rational numbers. So this also proves that negative 5 and 2 fifths is a rational number. All right, that's all I, ha that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.